Okay, so here's an interesting proposition. What if all of these mountains you're looking at right here were actually created because of the effects from the biosphere, from life? Or in other words, what if a lot of these really large mountains on our planet were actually sort of created with the participation of life itself? Now that's quite a proposition, but that's exactly what this new paper you can find in the description below proposes, and it sort of makes sense. Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be talking about this somewhat interesting and possibly groundbreaking study that might help us understand how biosphere influences the geology of our planet and might also help us understand how all of this would work on other planets as well. So let's discuss this in a little bit more detail, but let's actually start right here. On another planet that has geology we're quite familiar with, planet Mars. Now, interestingly, the geology of Mars is extremely different from what we have on our own planet. For example, you're not going to find a lot of stereotypical mountains. You're going to find things like this right here, this really, really huge valley you see known as Valles Marineris. And you're also going to find places like Olympus Mons, or the biggest volcano in the solar system. But none of them are anything similar to what we have on planet Earth and were actually formed in entirely different ways. And the main reason behind this is because Mars doesn't have the same geological functions or the same geological activity as planet Earth. For example, it doesn't have what's known as plate tectonics, the phenomenon best described in this simulation here. So here, on Mars at least, the continents don't actually exist or don't flow around, don't interact, and don't create any formations that they do create here on planet Earth. Now one of the best ways of trying to understand how all of this works is this relatively simple simulation, the link for which you can find in the description below, created by the wonderful people from University of Colorado. It actually helps you understand how continental crust works, how the composition and, for example, thickness changes the interaction of the crust with some of the other types of crust, but more importantly, it helps you understand how various plates interact creating various formations. For example, if we have a very thick continental crust right here, and somewhat thinner oceanic crust right here, and the two start to collide forming the convergent plate, at some point a lot of the deposits from the oceanic crust are going to start melting, evaporating, and eventually creating volcanoes on the surface of the continental crust. And those volcanoes are going to create mountains, with the best example being the iconic Mount Fuji in Japan. Then in some other cases, when two continental shelves start to smack into one another, so kind of like this, they'll end up squeezing each other so much that they'll end up producing even more mountain ranges and actually some of the biggest mountain ranges on the planet. The best example of this is the Indian plate squeezing into the Eurasian plate and creating the iconic mountains in the Himalayas, including of course Everest. And so that's the geological basics of planet Earth. A lot of the mountains here are produced in one way or another through the interaction of various plates. And that's of course one of the reasons why we're not going to be finding a lot of similar mountains on other planets, and especially planets that don't have plate tectonics. But I guess the question is, what does life have anything to do with any of this? It's still a geologic process, and it's still something that any planet in theory can have, assuming that it has plate tectonics as well. Well, it turns out that quite a few papers in the last decade or so discovered that one of the main reasons Earth has so many different mountains and such large mountains is because of the existence of graphite that's present in a lot of different shelves, continental shelves, that interact with one another. And so the addition of graphite, or basically carbon, into the rock inside different tectonic plates made the rock on the inside a lot more brittle and a lot more likely to stack to go under one another and created the necessary conditions for the plates to do this. But this new study took it a few steps further. They've established a somewhat difficult to ignore correlation between the existence of ancient life and the formation of various mountains on the planet specifically identifying a tremendously large formation of mountains around the same time as one of the biggest explosions of life on the planet, during the so-called GOE, Great Oxygenation Event. Implying, of course, that without this ancient life, a lot of mountains on planet Earth might have not even existed at all. 
And to be more specific, in this study they focused on 20 different mountain ranges around the planet, including of course some of the mountains in the Rockies, some of the mountains in South America, the Himalayas, and a lot of other famous mountain formations with specific age of their formation identified in the paper as well. As you see from this image, for example, a lot of these mountain ranges mostly formed between about 2.3 and 1.7 billion years ago, with this graph clearly showing that there was a very very large and pronounced period of mountain formation right here about 2 billion years ago, then another one about 1 billion years ago, and then another one about 500 million years ago. In other words, even though you expect mountains to be more or less be created kind of equally across the time scale, in reality, a lot of the mountain ranges on the planet were created in bursts and usually around the same time period. Which by itself is already a bit of a mystery. And so the scientists in the study sort of made an assumption. There might have been a source of all of this burst of formation and also at the same time possibly connecting all of this to the presence of graphite that's responsible for making mountains easier to produce. And specifically here the link is between the ancient life and the high amount of carbon being buried in the sediment. All of these tiny ancient organisms that were present all over the oceans approximately two and a half billion years ago, especially the organisms that became extremely successful during the Great Oxygenation event, as they essentially sank to the bottom of the oceans, got integrated as carbon into a lot of this ancient sediment, then turned into graphite, which allowed the plates to become a lot more brittle and to slide with a lot more ease. In other words, one of the reasons for the success of plate tectonics on our planet seems to be really because of this organic carbon inside the crust of our planet. And all of this, once again, being a result of ancient life that used to exist on our planet approximately two and a half billion years ago. But the vast majority of these changes, as you can see from this graph, began approximately two billion years ago, which directly correlates with a time when a lot of different plankton and bacteria began to add huge amounts of graphite into the ocean floor, thus becoming sedimented and then moving lower and lower into the Earth's crust. And this graph is important because it shows you when the carbon deposits were actually followed by formation of mountains. And notice how in pretty much every single case, or in most cases, in all of these 20 different mountain ranges, the sedimentation that was basically ancient life depositing as carbon into the plates was almost directly followed by a formation of mountains within about 100 million years. And even the most recent formations of mountains, including the Himalayas, seem to have followed a very similar pattern. In case of the Himalayas, for example, this process of thrusting was actually focused on a lot of the sediments from extremely organic rich beds that were created by a lot of this ancient life. And if correct, this is a huge discovery. It basically implies that the biosphere and the life on our planet is directly responsible for the geology of the planet as well. Or in other words, it establishes a link that nobody knew existed until now. And on top of this, all of the mountain ranges in this case contain huge amounts of graphite that was definitely produced by ancient life. Which of course gives this idea of all of this being biological in nature a little bit more credibility. Although in this case, it's really the presence of ancient marine life. It was the ocean organisms that allowed a lot of these mountains to form millions and even billions of years after their original success on the planet. In other words, another way of looking at this is, well, these are basically the monuments of their success on our planet millions and billions of years ago. But naturally monuments produced by physics, produced by geology, and produced through the interaction of various plates because the life made them slightly more slippery. But this is of course something that's still happening on our planet today and will continue going on until the plate tectonics finally stop. And interestingly, in terms of the actual composition or at least the percentage of carbon by mass compared to some of the other rocks nearby, it doesn't even require that much carbon. The mountain ranges produced by this effect only required about 10% to maximum about 20% of carbon by mass. All of the mountain ranges investigated in the study only had approximately 10% of graphite by mass, with certain mountain ranges having it up to about 20%. And that means that a relatively small amount of biomass is required on a planet in order to produce all of these monuments, all of these mountains. And this is of course really important because 
One day we might be able to discover something similar on some other exoplanet out there. We might find mountain ranges. And that would be a really interesting sign of potential discovery of historic life on those planets as well. And so, for example, discovering a planet with plate tectonics and of course a lot of mountains on the surface is maybe a telltale sign that something similar happened there as well. So geological formations as signs of potentially successful life in the past is technically a really, really important discovery and something that we can use even in our own solar system. Although I guess it wouldn't really work on Mars because Mars never really had plate tectonics. But if an object does have some sort of a plate activity, it might help us identify potential life. And so honestly, this is one of the biggest and most surprising discoveries of the year, at least to some extent and at least in geology. If some of the future studies can confirm this relationship and can actually establish the exact details of how all of this works, this would be a groundbreaking discovery. But I guess for now, well, you can learn about all of this in some of the links in the description below and make sure to subscribe because we'll talk about all of this in some of the future videos. Until then, thank you for watching, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow and as always, bye-bye.